Talentless Nana is an anime that begins with a false premise. And I do feel like the false premise is sort of a key component in watching the show. So normally I won't care about spoilers because I really don't think they matter all that much unless the show is like super new or something. But in this specific case, I do think that if you're trying to watch the show, the spoiler may actually end up ruining something for you. So I'm actually going to give you a couple of seconds to just click off the video before I just go all into this review, because I've decided that I actually don't think I can talk about this show properly without getting into the real premise of the show. Okay, so false premise of the show is basically that there is a group of superhumans with superpowers. They're literally called superpowers and superheroes that are being placed on the island to be trained to be heroes that will take out what are known as the enemies of humanity. And the show starts with this sort of false main character who is supposedly talentless, talents being what they call the powers in this world. And it is later revealed that his ability is to nullify other people's abilities. And there's two new students, one guy who's super sketchy, and this like cute pink-haired girl who reveals that her power is to read people's minds. Now, she talks about how her mind-reading power can overwhelm her sometimes because she's constantly hearing everyone's voices. So the opening of the show actually seems very, very tropey, very cliche, because we've got mind-reader overwhelmed by mind-reading power and main character whose power is to nullify other people's powers. Very basic, very generic, but as I was going through the episode, I the name of the show kept sticking with me because the pink haired mind reader girl, her name is Nana. But the show is called Talentless Nana and the main character's name wasn't Nana. So I was like, it's weird it's called that. Maybe it's it's Talentless slash Nana or something like that because the main character was supposed to be talentless and they don't reveal that he has an ability until towards the end of the episode. And then she fucking pushes him off a goddamn cliff reveals that her mind-reading power has been bullshit the entire time, she has no powers, she just has really good observation skills, and then she fucking murders him. And it is revealed that Nana has no actual ability, she's really the talentless one, which is why the show gets its name like that, and also that she is here to kill everyone on this fucking island. And so the show's premise actually ends up being about this powerless girl who has secretly infiltrated an island full of superhumans and is there to just straight up murder all of them. And the super sketchy guy from episode one is actually immortal, which really complicates her plans to kill everyone on the island. But also, he's a solid detective who is onto her serial killing and he's trying to take her down. Now, Nana herself works for an organization. And there is a reveal that it might not be fully accurate that the enemies of humanity are actually the people with superpowers, because apparently superpowers lead you to go completely fucking ballistic and kill a bunch of people. And when they created a superpower secret police of like, we'll, we'll call them like superheroes, they created like a secret police group of superheroes, the secret police superheroes just went even worse, evil, more corrupt. So Nana being one of the talentless, is here on the island to kill all of the talented ones because they're secretly being raised by the people with superpowers to become massive destructive weapons that could take out people. And she is provided with a list of names that shows how dangerous each individual person is. And they, surprisingly enough, have pretty good information. Now, she was supposedly went in there dark, so it's possible that they're just not showing it. she's reporting these characters' powers, but she does get a list of the maximum amount of potential victims that each character whose power she discovered has. And there is something kind of weird with this list, because, for example, the Necromancer had an evaluation of about 500,000 people, and the girl who could heal wounds by licking them had an evaluation of 150,000. And it, maybe it's possible that the healer just didn't develop her power properly enough to be lethal, but 150,000 by licking people's wounds seems fucking impossible. Whereas 500,000 for the necromancer 
her ability is to create fully functioning zombies, and she gains all of their knowledge and memory, she can see through all of their eyes, and if the person has superpowers, she just gains access to their superpowers. 500,000 is actually too small of a number. These aren't like slow zombies, like, oh, anyone can kill them. She's straight up reanimating fucking corpses, and she has full control over their abilities. So, there's something a little iffy about these numerical evaluations, and I think this is further showcased by the fact that at the end, we do get to see a bit of the organization that Nana's working on. First off, from flashbacks that Nana reveals towards the end of the show, we see that the organization is sort of gaslighting her into thinking that she led to the death of her family at the hands of the talented, because the information they present to her, which was very clearly displayed in front of her and didn't need to be, is straight up inaccurate and seems to be leading her to the false conclusions that the talented might be dangerous. So there's a level in here that she believes she's helping humanity out by taking out the people with superpowers, but she might just be getting further manipulated by the organizations she's working for. And I think this is further illustrated by, although what might be an animation error, of the fact that when the flashback reveals that the secret police with superpowers, we're going to call them the Super Gestapo, ended up going on this huge corruption rampage, the superiors that she's working for are shown in the same uniforms, implying that she might be working for the Super Gestapo. And this coupled with the fact that she has weird access to the information on her fellow students when she logically probably shouldn't have, really calls into question the motivations of the organization she works for, which is further compounded by the reveal at the end that her direct supervisor is actually the overseer of the island that's being called in on the supply vessel, meaning that the people overseeing the island are also overseeing Nana's execution of the students on the island. It's also shown that she's not assumed to be very effective, because they thought she would fail immediately, and if she killed one person, they thought she would stop immediately, even though she ends up cutting a huge swath through the numbers of the students by the end of this. And there's implications that there was a civil war in the past, and that the students on the island have gone on killing rampages against each other. So it is totally possible that Nana could be here. She Maybe she's here to actually kill them off. Maybe she's there sent by a rival organization because there's a group of superpowered people that are at war with each other. Or maybe she's there to sort of steel sharpen steel and c- create a sort of Darwinian survival exercise for the talented students. Because they are also left here with almost no supervision. This island is a catastrophe waiting to happen, and all of this seems to be ringleaded by the creators of the island. The amount of information in this is not fully given, and the show does end without really answering any of these questions, but there is a lot of stuff going in the background. Now, the show itself presents itself as Nana being a huge serial killer who is got absolutely no cooling off period, which ends up being to her detriment because she draws suspicion very quickly. Like, you can kill one guy and then people be suspicious. She ends up killing, like, there's one point where she ends up taking out four people in two days, and it's not even her fault because at that point she's just aggroing other people by her previous serial killings. But, like, she really needs to start cooling off or she is definitely going to get caught. She's a little too efficient of a killer and not good enough at hiding her tracks because at this point she is clearly the most suspicious person on the island that is constantly getting caught and multiple characters who've come after her have already revealed that they super suspect what she's up to now. And she has been caught actually by one character she didn't even know about. So yeah, Nana's serial killing is getting a bit out there. But the way the show ends up presenting itself is that Nana either decides to target someone or someone targets her, and then it sort of becomes a villain of the week kind of scenario where she has to sort of figure out how to get herself out of her current predicament that she may or may not have gotten herself into intentionally. And I think the biggest flaw with what was going on with that is that usually there's a sort of mystery aspect about what is this person's powers, because most people are lying about their powers, which is something they actually mentioned in the first episode even. But What is the person's powers? How do their powers work? And who is the, let's call them the threat? Because sometimes it's another fellow killer because there are multiple killers on the island, which does back up the Super Gestapo's claim of the fact that people with superpowers, like the thing Nana was told, will tend to go completely insane on homicidal rampage. Every bit of evidence of the show demonstrates that people with superpowers go on homicidal rampages. There is, I think, one, maybe two characters who have failed to show that they were capable of going on homicidal rampages. 
but it's very villain of the wiki, and usually the mystery aspect ends up getting undermined by the fact that the characters who are most active in the plot are usually introduced on in that specific segment. Like, for example, w- there was a huge, like, serial killer. Oh no, we have a killer on the island who's going around cutting people's throats. And the reveal was it was one of the characters that wasn't explored until that, until that specific arc began in, like, the last two or three episodes. And that's basically how it always goes. Whoever is the culprit, whoever is the main threat, whoever has the secrets is revealed in that arc. And I think the show could have aided itself if it was able to maybe slow a little more, show us more of the fellow students so we got more of an idea of what they were capable of. And then that would help us as the audience get better into trying to figure out the mysteries with Nana and with the detective Kiyoya. Regardless, seeing Nana get herself into these situations and then try and fucking wiggle her way out of these situations mostly because she's way too fucking hot as a serial killer. I don't mean that sexually. I mean that in every way, and she's too prolific and too fast at it, so she's drawing too much suspicion. As a really good draw of the show, it's this sort of mental back and forth. I've seen it compared to Death Note in that regard, although I wouldn't argue that it's on the same level. But the fact that Nana is the only character without supernatural powers, I think really does aid in that sort of, sort of mental battle that she ends up engaging on, especially because she drew Agra way too early. So she's not the most effective serial killer. But yeah, I, and I'll also say that a lot of the side cast ends up being pretty flat. The main cast, which is like Healer, Licking Girl, and Detective Kyoya and Nana, these are like the central focus. And I think their characters are handled pretty well. But I, I do think that a lot of the side cast and other classmates, you really don't get enough information on. Oh, and the guy who can turn into a cat. I think we get a good grasp on him, too. I like him, actually. I like all of the characters that we saw regularly. I will say that the show ends in a bit of an anti-climax. It's just sort of like dramatic ending, tragic scene, and then credits, and then there's no after credit scene. So it's a little abrupt on the ending, and I'm not super fond of that. But I enjoyed all of the characters. I enjoyed the mental battles between Nana and Kyoya and sometimes the other characters. And I'm really interested in sort of the background story of the characters in this underlying intrigue conspiracy plot that's circling around the island and Nana herself. So I am super interested in seeing more. And I thought this was a great time, as evidenced by the fact that I literally will not shut up about it. Twitch and Discord in the description. I've been Sacrobolic, your Envoy of Hope. Bye-bye!